Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overall series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.2. In this episode, I hope to launch the Mars Flyby mission, which uh, we will have a window for in 299 days. Though, uh, we might need some technology to communicate with such a mission, so we'll have to take a look at the tech tree to see where we get an appropriate antenna. Because right now, this dish, which used to be very good, uh, under current configurations with Realism Overhaul, only has a range of 75,000 kilometers, which would not be enough. So, we need an antenna that will actually work for us. And so, yeah. I mean, of course... As I've demonstrated, and uh, if you do the calculation out, you know, Commutatron 16, even though it has 4,000 kilometer range, can actually communicate from the moon if you've got like two or three of them. Uh, so the KR-7's range is very much more than just 75,000 kilometers. That's because you have to take into account the range of the surface bases communicating with it. Uh, and there's an equation for that I'm not going to go over, but you can look it up in the remote tech settings for additive range or uh, yeah anyway I am no specialist on remote tech so I will proceed but remote tech is gonna cause a problem for this because right now we don't have a very good communication satellite system and launching from the runway we can't communicate to I guess the launch pad has the actual uh, communication relay at the KSC so apparently we're horizon blocked or something so that uh, this even though the cockpit has a built-in antenna it wasn't able to communicate so I've got a I, I don't know I guess the thing to do will be to try and put a long-range antenna and see if that works out so I'll, I'll put two on the tail here we're gonna continue trying it uncrewed first a drone if you will okay so yeah Uncrewed. I haven't decided whether to bring Jeb back or not. Still of two minds about that. But let's build another one and see if the Commutron 16s will be enough to communicate with it. I I don't know. Actually, it's tough to extend them in the atmosphere, huh? Well, you shouldn't. Uh, maybe the Reflectrons are a better deal. But even their uh, extended range, I don't know if it will feel be enough to actually communicate. Okay, so that's an idea. I thought about launching it with a Kerbal in and putting parachutes on, but I don't think that's safe either. So, yes, I think this will be something we will build. Okay, and apparently the build time was shorter because we had recovered the previous uh, Dennis. So, it shouldn't take too long, like two weeks or so. Let's go to the R&D building and see what parts we need for an interplanetary probe. Improved instrumentation, I think we're already unlocking. Yeah, already being researched, 274 days. And this is an antenna with a, thousand, a million kilometer range. A million kilometers. Well, that's not quite enough for Mars. But, it, I mean, again, we have to take into consideration the range of the antenna down on Earth. And it says here, effective range 340 million kilometers, suitable for missions to Venus and with some care Mars. Comparatively low bandwidth, on par with standard Omnis. Except it's not an Omni, it's a cone thing. So that's a possibility. And then there's also this Ranger Block 1 core that could be handy. And of course the solar panels, which will be very necessary. So, alright. I think we could try that, certainly. So that's already being researched. Let's take a look at how long it's going to take to research, though. It says 274 days. Well, that doesn't give us much time to build the rocket in time for this launch window. Upgrades. I think we can afford some upgrade points. So let's purchase some. And we'll put it into R&D. Okay and 225 days well that's better let's try the supersonic flight first and after that maybe we'll have the extra funds necessary to buy some more upgrade points and push it further of course we can also rush build the Mars rocket if necessary so yeah okay here we are and it actually looks like we do have communication this time so does that mean we're good to go I don't know 
And we'll wait till KGR is doing his thing? Or... Oh, I have no SAS. Hmm. That might be something I need to fix. But let's do a quick try without SAS, just making sure basic systems are alright. Alright, throttle is up. And ignition. Okay, what did I forget now? Feed pressure too low. I thought we had fixed that before. I tell you. Okay, I thought I'd fix that, but apparently not. Let's try this again. Just to push things along faster, I'm gonna get some more upgrade points. I'll go down to 500,000 in my funds. And up this. Okay, 1.12 signs per day. Alright, let's try this again. No SAS, throttle up. Overheating indicator, I don't understand that. Uh, who knows. Okay, this time... Ignition? For heaven's sakes. It says nominal. That says I have uh, communication. There's fuel. Ignition. Nominal. Is it saying that I don't have a connection? There's no ignition. It should be avionics because of this able avionics package. Should have had communications anyway. That's 300 kilometer range in addition to the 50 up here. What? Uh, just because there's no crew in the cockpit? That that that, that shouldn't matter. I've tested other things with just uh, with uh, empty capsule and the able avionics package before that's how I normally test my capsules so that's not unusual shouldn't be a problem maybe uh, control from here would help it I don't know wait no connection to send command on it said no com connection to send a command on but this reads green hold on the staging command doesn't say that but if I directly activate engine, it says no connection to send command on. But that's green. It doesn't say no connection. Okay, well, I think I'm going to revive Jeb, and Jeb is going to try this. Now again, we're, we're mainly waiting for the technology to unlock so we can build our Mars rocket. But yeah, I'm going to revive Jeb specifically to take on this task. Respawn. Okay, then we won't need communication and we can test this and we won't be too miffed. I mean, you know, Jeb had already died anyway. So yeah, that is the, that is the plan. Alright, here we go. Now this is full mass. Before I had it at uh, partial load because the controller could only control five tons but now while we have Jeb uh, we don't have to worry about that I think who knows I mean I can't figure this stuff out half the time alright throttle up SAS is on we have Jeb oh uh, boy here we go well now they are lit oh and it's veering to one side shoot uh, oh crud oh Ah. Uh, okay. Jeb's dead again. Let's let's not do planes. Let's do rockets. Rockets are better than planes. Okay, so I'm building my little probe for Mars, right? And we've unlocked improved instrumentation and everything. And I go to unlock the antenna that I needed which used to be called the high gain antenna or something like that and I purchased it and it said it was purchased okay and but it said it couldn't be the first part on the vessel so I put the ranger core which I also purchased and I put one here and then I came back and it was no longer purchased and it had a different name Communitron HG55 okay so I purchased it, purchased it again I placed them on yes they are placed See, they're very placeable, but not in the right place. Communitron HG55. It's not retracted. Yes, they can do that too. But it still says purchase entry cost 800. 
I think there's something wrong here. Going to the R&D building. No, don't save this mess. Also, there seems to be some pieces of the plane that we crashed that I need to pick up. But anyway, uh, going down here, improved instrumentation. We see that uh, we own the high gain antenna. Like I said, that there was a different name for it. This high gain antenna, same stats, all the same stats. And here is another high gain antenna. Same stats. No commute, and they're both unlocked. No commutron. No, the commutron HG55 is over here, still unlocked. But there's two of these. I think they're multiplying. I think they're multiplying. I think if I unlock this, I'll get another high gain antenna, and it'll still be unlocked. I might be going crazy here. Is there any other antenna I could use? It doesn't look like it. There's something wrong. I'm sure there's been an updated RP0 or something that fixes it, or I'll have to check. But for now, this is a frustration. Let me at least see if I can get the probe together or whether it'll have some other issue. Okay, well, it looks like the problem is not just with the antennae. I just tried to unlock this solar panel. You can see it's unlocked. It says cost instead of purchased. Purchase, but it says part model requires entry purchase in R&D again even though I've unlocked it. Uh, another curious problem is that the antenna here uh, cites its electric charge requirement in 4.2 per minute uh, instead of the way that everything else does it now in uh, realism overhaul which is in wattage and so uh, you know this has 50 watts 0.8 watts and uh, the solar panels all cite how much power to give in watts 12.6 watts for these uh, which is which is a lot of watts, but I don't know how many watts now. I, I think I think uh, one kilowatt is one electric charge per second. I Think that's right in which case 4.2 per minute means um, probably about 60 watts I want to say uh, so I mean it's uh, a little bit more than that probably more like 70 watts. I'm thinking that that's the case, but it's a little bit hard to tell. And at least the solar panels say watts, even though they're similarly glitched. And of course we need double the wattage, double the electric charge out at Mars. All these things must be taken into, an, into account. I've got two of them. So I'm expecting 140 watts there. And uh, we'll just say the regular load uh, 240 watts if uh, these aren't being time warped. So 240 watts and then double that's 480 watts. So I'd like uh, probably a set of uh, let's say four of these on one side. That would be nice. But I can't get it right now. Let's hop on over to the R&D building and see what's up. But this is costing me more than I would like. Double unlocking things all the time. Okay, and it seems to be focused on this improved instrumentation slot. So here again, this is the same one. I can tell by the wattage. And I'm going to purchase it again. Cost 9000 Okay, so it says it's unlocked. Does it have a different name for it now? Well, ST3 solar panel. And then there's a duplicate ST3 solar panel here. One I unlocked in the, in the VAB. This one I unlocked here. Is another one gonna pop up if I go out of the VA uh, out of the R&D building and pop back in? Probably, but I'm not gonna pop in to find out. I don't want to know. Well, let's check it out. Well, it's here, but it still says purchase. So yeah, just totally messed up. Uh, they're pretty darn big. I don't know if I can get four to a side like this. And I'll have to reduce fuel in this too. Anyway, let me uh, fix it up. You can see I've got an orbital telescope. I unlocked that as well. At least that works. And uh, yeah, and I chose that because even if we don't get it to Mars, wherever we happen to get it, uh, this is a new instrument and we can get new science from it. Okay, so after some confusion and frustrations, here we have the Navigator 1 on the Mammoth rocket. And we, I've just got two solar panels here. Hopefully it'll be enough. I calculated four solar panels as the requirement 
for both antennas, but we'll hope that just one antenna will take care of Mars. We'll have to see. Uh, it said we have to be very careful if we're just using one, so I don't know. Uh, to counterbalance the solar panels, we've got Commutron 16 here and uh, orbital perturbation experiment there. And the 1 kN thruster gives us 865 meters per second, and that's a very slow burn. And that's mainly just for minor adjustments, and we've got the little, uh, little uh, RCS jets like that. And aside from that, we've got a tank of UDMH and red fuming nitric, ac nit nitric acid, inhibited red fuming nitric acid, three in fact. And that is for the Agena engine, which we've got on the configuration that has two ignitions, for safety's sake. And we've also got little thrusters to orient, as well as tanks of hydrazine. So, yes, and the, the one kilonewton thruster is on hydrazine as well. So, nothing wrong there. Let's check these. Uh, since we're, we've only got a launch window, a very tight launch window for Mars, we want to make sure everything is alright. Seems like that is all right, and uh, we'll have to get through this stage in on the first orbit. Otherwise, we gotta be sapping electric charge from the probe, which would not be nice. And then we've got a stage here, and I guess I'll take these off. This is four Agena engines, four Agena engines, and then separation motors to sell the fuel down. And I decided to stick with engines that we've actually tried and gotten some research points on, data points on. So uh, continuing on, we've got the LR-105s, which we have seen before, though we usually only used one. Now we have two there. And of course, separation motors to settle the fuel down. And finally, at the bottom, four of the LR-89s. So basically, this is sort of like a double atlas kind of thing with uh, quadruple Agena, if you'd like and then another Agena on top. That's the basic idea. And we're using four avionics units throughout the main launcher. And it's three stages to orbit, and then this is the Mars transfer stage, and then final corrections. That's the idea. Hopefully, that will work out. I don't know. It's going to be taking off at a fairly low pace. It's a 1.19 sea level thrust to weight ratio, so that's going to be a patient burn to start off. I've used both types of clamps. I don't know if that's a good idea or a bad idea, but uh, redundancy. Uh, so we've got the staging there. See, I'm checking everything. I'm trying. I'm trying. Okay. And then those two engines light, right? And then that, that, separation motors, four engines light, fairings, separate that, then the final Agena. Okay, and plenty of Delta V, I mean, we are talking about 9,500 on the three launch stages, and then we still have 4,600 for Mars. Okay, well, it's going to take too long to build it, though. We're going to have to try and rush it. We're going to save it. I mean, it's a big rocket. And it costs a lot. I mean, actually, it's not costing that much here. It's more a matter of time. Let me try and build it and see how we can rush it. Okay, we need it done in 111 days. Is that even possible? That I do not know. So, um, rush build 3,000. I'm willing to spend up uh, until we get to 300,000 there. I think that's okay. There, now it's before the transfer window. That was costly, but we want to get this done, or try to at least. Good faith attempt. Oh, of course, we're going to be getting science anyway, as long as it gets, gets into orbit, I can use the orbital telescope to take pictures of Earth. We only recently acquired that technology. While we're on our way to Mars, we will be researching basic capsules and mature orbital rocketry. Okay, so let's warp to complete. Well, it looks like even though I was ahead of time, uh, we are going to slightly go past the launch window because it takes 6 days and 14 hours to roll this out. Man, I need to, I need to do something about that, huh? Okay, well, um, I don't know. Uh, will adding upgrade points to the VAB improve that? 
Uh, that's a little bit. Uh, yes, it does. Uh, five days, 20. Well, I guess I might as well go ahead. We will get one build point. Yes. Now, now we'll, we'll be on time. But actually, I don't know whether that's the right time to launch, though. It's night time. Let me see now. Let's turn up the ambient light adjustment. There we go. Um, Longitude of ascending zone is not bad. I didn't do a totally horrible job of eyeballing it. Let's target the moon. Oh, wait. 43 degrees? Oh, well, that longitude of ascending node always... Okay, so I did horribly. Uh, that longitude of ascending node's not right then. Uh, okay, well, um, 43 degrees. I have no idea. Um, this will be my first time trying to plot a Mars transfer when I'm inclined. Uh, it shouldn't be too bad because we've got the momentum of the Earth around the Sun already. It shouldn't be hurting us that much. Sort of. I mean, unless we're like at the ascending or descending node with respect to Mars. But maybe it'll be off by a bit. I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, you know, it's the first attempt for Mars. Can't expect it to work the first time. We'll just try our best. Here we go. Everything set. Ignition. slowly. Now our stages all have pretty good power so we shouldn't need to worry about that too much. Thrust weight ratios are fairly high all the way through. That was just in case something goes wrong. We're putting a lot, this is a big investment for us. The reason I didn't time warp on the launch pad was because I was afraid to boil off. I suppose that wasn't a big problem. But just in case. Again, I didn't want to take any chances or anything like that. And if there was a problem with the fuel for some reason or anything else, we would miss this launch window. I forget whether this is the first nighttime launch in this series. It could be. Definitely past the speed of sound now. We're going through max Q here, maximum dynamic pressure. Rocket is looking good, 30 seconds left in the first stage. Okay, getting ready here. Separation. Ignition. And ignition on the two LR-105s appears to be good. Bit of a deviation there, but we are recovering. I'm trying to correct some of the inclination here, so bringing the relative inclination down. Just deviating from prograde by about 10 degrees. Situation seems excellent. We appear to have enough delta V4 orbit with the three stages. At least that's the way it seems so far. Okay, I think uh, fairing step is probably okay now. Let's try it. Let's try it. Off they go. Antenna out. See, does it have its tail out? No. Okay, well, I'll activate the antenna manually. Let's see. Gravity scan can't be done right now. We're still in the atmosphere, technically, so both of those can't be used right now. Stage is out, set, and ignition. 
Okay, well, we had four Aginas. Now we have three Aginas. Why do we have three Aginas? I've pressed F3. No idea. Doesn't say. Well, good thing that I packed a lot of power, huh? And also good thing that these have six degrees of gimbling, which is what is saving us from spinning all over the place, I think. So it's probably... A, no, it's doing a good job. Uh, appears to be a pitch issue that... That's... Uh, yeah, this is pitch for it right now. So yeah, it's using the gimbling to adjust pitch. Okay, um, so we're at 0.88 G's. And I think I want to pitch up just a little bit here. And that's yaw as far as the controls are concerned. No worries, we have redundancy. Um, did test flight kill it? Because there was nothing in the F3 log. No. Well... Well, I mean, it says it's okay. <laughs> that might be... Oh, that's the one on top. No, it's just not reading. It's not reading the one that, uh, that failed. Should fail parts only? No. The one that failed has is gone. So it's not actually showing it. This one is the one we haven't lit yet. Okay. Well... HUD doesn't show anything. It's that box there and it doesn't show anything. Oops. Okay, so no feedback on why one of the engines exploded. Didn't say anything collided into it. Not in the F3 menu, which takes a long time to open actually. And that's a lot of scrolling that it gives room for. Well now we are in space, so let's try the visual observations. Okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, why don't we transfer it? Transmit it. I think that was biome dependent, right? Yeah. And... Right. And then... Gravity scan, we've done. Okay. Well, while we add redundancy on this stage, the other Agena stage, the one that's going to push us to Mars, had better work out. I'm going to quickly lock the probe's fuel. Doesn't have that much of it, but I might as well not waste it. By the way, you might wonder why I didn't use the RD-0105 here, and it just didn't have enough thrust, and you can't put multiple RD-015s on a tank this big because it's two meters in diameter. Uh, so that's why I have to use the Agenas. Obviously the RD-105s, uh, 0105s, and also the upgrade to it, which actually we've already unlocked, the uh, 0109, have better ISP than these Agena engines. Okay, here we go. Reaching orbit and off. 213 by 165 and that will be fine. Don't know why did that engine turn dark? Oh, I guess there was uh was there a yeah, performance loss. There was a loss of thrust issue at some point and a performance loss on another engine. Wow, these Gina engines not necessarily reliable, huh? Okay, well um yeah, that's annoying. Yep gotta be aware of that but but they did their job in this case uh, despite the loss of one engine we got to orbit just fine and with some delta V to spare so that's good I'm gonna separate off that stage it's gotta remain space junk what can I do but off it goes so that we don't have to power its core anymore which is actually down here by the way these guys are actually clipping uh, a core I doubt that actually had any effect on on them. I think it was just test flight causing problems, but okay, our probe and the transfer stage are free, and now it is time for me to figure out how to plot this. Our relative inclination is now thirty six degrees, which is better but not a whole lot better.
Alright, I've made the plot, and I think you will agree that I've done well. Uh, our burn at Earth is 7, uh, 3,794.4 meters per second. Our maneuver mid-course uh, plane change, it is a plane change, is 863.3. And we will get a uh, periapsis around Mars, according to this, of 7,493 kilometers, which will be well within the requirements. Uh, though it's always a little bit touchy with all of this, so I, I don't want to fine-tune it just yet. We'll fine-tune it with the mid-course adjustment. Taking a look at our total delta V, uh, we will take a look at that. So uh, again, the first burn is 3,794.4. We have 3,832 meters per second in this stage, so a surplus of 38 meters per second. The burn here, the mid-course plane change is 830. 63.3 meters per second and our little stage with the one kilonewton thruster gives us 865 meters per second uh, which is just one meters per second 1.7 meters per second too much um, which is probably enough to orient the rocket uh, we'll probably keep the genus stage with us over there so we'll have the, the hydrazine from that stage in order to orient the rocket before using the one kilonewton thruster uh, it's close. It might not work. It'll depend on how everything goes, but uh, well, this is uh, definitely a purpose-built purpose-built uh, Mars mission. Yep, no, not too much leeway here. Okay, so that is the idea. We have our node in 56 minutes. The question now is whether we'll have communication when we get there. I really should toss up some more communication satellites now that it comes to it. We have some, you know, uh, failed missions that are really helping us with communication right now. Taking a look at where the burn is scheduled to occur, it looks like we would have a chance of communicating through uh, the Pacific Ocean site there. I don't think that's, that's not Honolulu, that's not our Pacific Ocean site. That's Hawaii right there. So we can hope, but right now we don't have communication, so it is time to time warp. Okay, we are at the node. How's the fuel? Fuel's very stable. Okay. Throttle up. And ignition. We have ignition. We're on our way to Mars. We are at the maneuver node and it looks like we are in fact halfway through the burn, so excellent on that. It's going to be hard to actually shut it off at the right time. We're on escape. Uh, oh, okay, I did 13.2 uh, meters per second too much. Okay. Well, let's let me replot it and see if I can just deal with that. It's possible. Okay, well, this is interesting. I can get it to 45 kilometers with uh, nearly 18 meter per second burn here and then 865 at the mid-course plane change um, but it's it's pretty pretty tight so I would like to do the first burn with the RCS if possible and only use the Gina engine for the mid-course the start of the mid-course adjustment we've got some hydrazine here but I don't know if it's enough to do 18 meters per second or not Let's find out. This is where having the thrusters somewhat tilted back, though, I mean, it's, they're not totally tilted back. They're still tilted mostly to the side. Might help, but I don't think they're going to be able to... I, I should have tilted them more, actually, if I wanted them to do this. They're good for selling the fuel down, but this might be too much for them. You know, as we're getting higher, I'm going to activate one of the antennae as planned. Well, that's sort of how fast are they using there. Actually, they have a fair amount of delta V, don't they? Not enough, I don't think. Let's see. 0.3, okay. 10.95.2. Actually, I think it's enough. Okay, well, it's going great as far as the little thrusters are concerned. Oh, uh, but, oh, wait, wait, hold on. 
where you're deviating from the maneuver node a bit. Uh, even though they were tilted in order to handle maneuvering instead of going forward and backward, because I tilted them the way I usually do, works out. But, so uh, we've got that basically done, but we'll need to readjust that, I'm sure. Um, our power situation is a little bit dubious because I for, uh, I've been sort of planning to accidentally carry this with us, really. Because I want to use the fuel here, the extra 25 meters per second, and also these thrusters to maneuver. But I didn't figure that into my power plans. So right now we're facing the sun. Let's see what happens when we time warp and go... Okay, it looks like we're recharging as long as we go into uh, low power mode on the probe cores. So maybe it's alright? Uh, let's do some quick science here. Okay, above Earth's grasslands, transmit that data. Um, gravioli detection. Yes, transmit that. Well, it's indicating that we need a little bit more than I planned. Well, that's okay, I guess. Well, let's find out. So that's the plot. We've still got 25 in here if the Agena engine still lights after a long period of time. We've got stuff cooking as far as R&D, so I'm just going to go to Mars now and let's see if it works. I'm not going to dawdle. I'm not going to save it for another episode. No, we are doing it now. Unfortunately, there's no locking batteries or anything like that now. I should do some science here. Okay, grasslands. I'm gonna have to deal with uh, the delay. We are at 2.93 seconds now. Okay, we are now reading a crash course into Mars. Wouldn't be too bad, actually. Okay, proceeding. Uh, well, the power seems alright. Let's see, solar panel, sun... Sort of. Now, I've kept SAS on because persistent rotation would be really annoying in this case. Uh, because I don't think uh, anything is going to be able to settle the probe down enough to maintain orientation properly. Even a tiny little error means that at a uh, high time warp you're gonna go flipping around and around so okay we are recharging and we can proceed I'll keep it to this view so I can still see the Sun all we need to do is get to the mid course adjustment then we can dump the able core and well, that's as good as I can get the solar panels but we're still losing power I'll get as close to the mid-course adjustment as I can, use up the 25 meters per second, and then proceed on. Well, we are now here, still a ways away from the mid-course adjustment, but maybe we can correct enough of the inclination to make a difference. So I am going to point at the node. Okay, so it's just an inclination correction, so we'll do as much as we can here. Oh, it's risky now. Uh, don't go unstable on me. Still got some uh, hydrazine there too. But let's finish up this engine. And that's the end of that. <laughs> uh, I guess I can continue burning the RCS like this. It'll still use up the hydrazine and will get us closer to our target. Well, while that's going on, uh, maybe I can ask for some science to be done. It'll take some time to actually do it. Uh, I've queued them up. Oh, SAS is going to take 83 seconds to actually activate. Right. Well, actually normal positive would be even better if you could handle that. I don't know if it has enough uh, thrust power. Oh, I know why. Uh, yeah, the reason why we were rotating is probably be no, no. They all still have hydrazine. I thought maybe one had run out of hydrazine or something. Okay.
Okay, that's off. We're not really facing the sun right now. I don't know, the RCS thrusters don't appear to be firing, are they? Yeah. That's worrisome. Were they mis- I checked that they were configured properly. They've got hydrazine. Yep. I don't know. Right now I'm just gonna wait for it to rotate towards the sun. And... I don't know, maybe that's about the right time to activate SAS. 83 second delay and all. Well, okay, the keys work for the RCS thrusters, but my joystick doesn't, is the problem. Right now my joystick does not work to control the RCS thrusters. Yeah, suddenly Smart ASS is not using the RCS thrusters. I can, like, well, maybe it's just using them sparingly, hopefully. Anyway, let me verify that we are going to be doing what we need to be doing with this burn. Okay, that is pretty darn close. Let's try that. Eh, it does, it does seem to be wiggling, though. I'm not totally confident it's controlling this thing. Yeah, I mean, look at that. That's that's deviation that's gonna cause us problems. Let me shut down. Um, let's let's try SAS. Yeah, the joystick commands don't work. I guess that's finally limited by. No, uh, well, no, it's showing yaw actually. It's showing that yaw is happening. So why isn't it happening? So my joystick is showing a yaw occurring, but the RCS thrusters aren't firing in that direction. They're, they're tilted properly, so they should yaw me. Should I want that to happen? They can fire, as you can see. I don't know. Which one could fire to push me in the right direction? Alright, well, in desperation and as a complete last resort, I've decided to tell Flight Computer to turn prograde. Uh, maneuver prograde, I mean. And we will see how it does. Smart ASS is not too far off right now. But it's still gonna wiggle about, I think. And it's not really firing the thrusters to the fullest extent. I don't know why. Okay. In theory, it's been told to hold maneuver prograde. Let me turn Smart ASS off, just in case... That's a conflict. It doesn't seem to be doing anything. Nope, it's definitely not doing this thing that it's been told to do. Execute next maneuver node. That's the most dangerous thing I can try. Did it actually register that? Some delay to... Signal delay too high. Signal delay too high to execute this maneuver at the proper time. Oh, because 17 minutes. Hmm. Oh, well, I guess I could tell it uh, normal plus. Same idea. That's. We just need to hold orbital normal. Yeah. Okay, well, we're within my acceptable range here, so I'll fire the thruster. Now I tried to balance the whole thing. Uh, the cell panels are supposed to be balanced by this and the commutron. I checked the masses. So it's not supposed to be unbalanced like that. But that could be a thing. But then again, you would expect the thrusters to be firing to counterbalance that then. It's not really happening very much. Alright, well, situation report. We're pretty much completely out of control. I'm sort of vaguely burning in the right direction, but not really. Um, flight computer couldn't point me at the maneuver node. Smart ASS obviously can't point me at the maneuver node. I'm not entirely sure what the control problem is and why using my joystick doesn't work on it. Um, but using the normal translation keys does. 
Um, maybe if I was in docking mode. I don't know. This is a uh, weird. I'm 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 trying everything now. Uh, I I can't really see the thrusters. No, docking mode doesn't help. So yeah, yeah. I was not expecting that we wouldn't be able to point at the maneuver node. We had enough fuel until we had this spinning problem, and now pointing up at the maneuver node. So no direction on none of the three axes as far as my joystick is concerned work. I, J, K, and L all work just fine. W, A, S, and D, and Q, and E don't work is the situation. If you have any ideas, uh, feel free to share them. But this probe is not going to Mars. Um, the inclination will be such that the deviation will be too much anyway. Um, actually, Smart ASS... Oh, no, I've, I took it out of time warp. This is actually the rate of rotation that we have. Um, yeah, with the deviation that we have right now, you can see, I mean, it's not even showing a, an encounter with Mars of any kind. You can... No, that's the wrong way. Yeah, I, I've, I've had enough. <laughs> um, this was a noble attempt and we were close, but we're not quite there. Actually, the electric charge situation is not bad, though I don't know if I have much faith in our ability to turn towards the, the um, sun after doing all this. Well, that's the right direction, basically. All right, well, on our first attempt on a Mars flyby, we are seeing a close approach distance of 3 million kilometers. Not really close. Not really close. Um, well, we'll have to do better next time. Not entirely sure how I'm going to solve these problems, since they're control issues that I'm not actually used to. I mean, you know, I'm, I sort of expect to be able to use the joystick to control. I know there is a lag, but previously that was not a problem. If it is a problem now, it'd be nice if either Flight Computer or Smart ASS could actually point at the node in order to execute the burn. But that apparently is not a thing. So, I don't know. Uh, maybe with more thrusters, uh, more robust thruster configuration instead of the more minimalist thing that I've been going with, they would be able to. Who knows? But actually, the solar panel situation, let's, let's do a little time warping here. Well, I mean, it's spinning around, so it's not getting power all the time, but it recharges when it's facing the sun still. So that's positive. It might have been... Uh, actually, maybe we should time warp until we're there to see if it still recharges when it's... It's a little bit of a waste of time, but, well, it's, it's almost done now. It does need to be facing the sun constantly, not spinning around. Oh, well, anyway, so I think I'll leave it here. This took a while, so I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.